Are you looking for a new football news app? I can't lie, that's a very odd thing to just say in normal conversation, but I mean I- Then you've got to make sure to check out One Football down in the description below for all of your news, whether you're a Barca fan, Liverpool fan, or an Alfreton I don't know if it has them, I'm not gonna lie. Just download it anyway. So, hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here, and today it is time for me to welcome you to another episode of our FIFA 19 Wolves career mode here, and today we are getting firmly back into European activity as well as Premier League adventures. I'll show you what games we're going to be playing in today's episode with the calendar. We've actually got two European ties in this one, Celtic who we faced last episode and St. Garlan who we made our European debut against. In between that is two Premier League ties against West Brom and against Liverpool. The return fixture of that last year, we lost 7-1. So we'll be hoping for better fortunes against Liverpool this year. If you go on to enjoy this video though, slap a like on it and subscribe if you are new to the channel. It's the big red button under the video and we're still trying to get towards 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And if that did happen, I'd be ridiculously thankful. I mean, I'll be thankful like whenever it happens, obviously, but like 100K before the end of the year is a good goal to have. So just whatever the situation, however you can help, uh, just it would be really appreciated if you did. Now, the state of play going into this fourth game of the Europa League group stages is I believe we can actually qualify with a win over Celtic because obviously we'll only have two games left after this one. In fact, actually for that matter, if we win any, if we win at all, we're through. Because even if St. Garland win every game between now and the end of the group stages, the most they can get is 10. And if we beat Celtic, we get 12. So yeah, if we win this game against Celtic, we're actually through to the next round round of the, the Europa League, which is obviously the round of 32. Here then confirmation that if we do win this next game against Celtic, we are through to the round of 32. Now, last episode, I will admit, I forgot to put the player of the episode vote in, first of all. It did get some votes because I came home from wherever I was and then did it afterwards, but I did miss about half of people, so it's not the most accurate player of the episode vote, and I do apologise for that. I will remember to absolutely do it every episode from here on in. Again, massive apologies for that one but Andreas Pereira did win the compromise vote he did win it by quite a distance so I still feel as if it's pretty valid he came off the bench and scored twice against Reading in the Carabao Cup so he grabs himself three points overall and I believe these are the first points he's ever accumulated when it comes to the player of the episode poll Adama Traore grabbed another two his form has been incredible we will be potential boosting him in the transfer window regardless and then Diogo Jota was third he's had a very difficult series so far he's not really got Got any sort of momentum going but he looked a lot better in the Europa League last episode hopefully he can now kick on and reach some good form so let's get into that potential early European decider a win here remember against Celtic at the Molyneux and we are through to the knockout stages the boys then warming up pretty low pressure game if I'm gonna be honest with you I don't really know what a draw gets us here Artem Zuba playing against us again he obviously scored that belter of a goal against us in the reverse fixture of this but we'll be hoping to keep him at bay this time as Scott Sinclair goes past Upa McCall Oh, no, good acceleration, but Patrizio punches that one clear. Zuba out wide here to Alzani. It's going to fall through to uh, to Unsham. And Upa Meccano there with a vital touch as uh, the deflected pass, if you like, managed to find the French midfielder. Cody there fired into Jonathan David. This is Samaseku out wide. Now here is Diogo Jota, who will cut back away from Cedric Suarez to the edge of the area there for Jonathan David. But right down the throat of Craig Gordon. Andreas Pereira will swing this towards the back stick. And that's gone out of play. I've never seen that happen before. Okay, fair enough. I didn't think I aimed, I didn't even aim close to the goalkeeper. How was that? Has let, I've never seen that happen before. Nil-nil the score at half time. Not exactly a classic Europa League fixture at this point. We've had, I think, one good chance. Celtic have had one all right chance. But Andreas Pereira, running a bit more space now. Diogo Jota can cut inside. He scored a similar goal in the reverse fixture. And he scored another one now. Diogo Jota gives us the lead once again. 1-0 the scoreline and yet again it's a brilliant goal from Diogo Jota in the 52nd minute this game finally sparks into life with a bit of brilliance the youngster cuts inside and just curls it in I didn't even get the timing correct on that one the timing was only yellow on that shot and it still found the back of the net oh man what a goal I feel like this game did actually need that sort of brilliance because it's been very stale this is Samaseku Andreas Pereira looking for a bit of space can cut back and put 
the ball into the centre towards Munir with the bicycle kick off the post. Oh man, I was already celebrating. I thought that was going to go in. Unfortunately though for us, Munir was unable to capitalise on the opportunity. Into Morgan gives White. Pereira, that's through towards Jonathan David. Kelvin Lawal. Oh, it's just over the bar from Kelvin Lawal. Really good effort actually. Cody with the ball there into Jonathan David. Back into Cody again. Out wide here is Kelvin Lawal. Puts the ball into the back stick there for Pereira and that is the goal that wins it for us and puts us through to the round of 32 in the Europa League. We are in to the knockout stages with that goal from Andreas Pereira. Brilliant ball in as well from the youngster Kelvin Lawal. Connor Cody puts it down the line. Lawal whips it in. Pereira is not marked and Jonathan David had to get out of the way of that one. I think Pereira would have been having kittens if he blocked it on the line from his own player's shot. That though is game, set and match. We've been knocking on the door actually in the last 10 minutes as Celtic became a lot more attacking. That'll be the final action of the game. It's a 2-0 victory against Celtic and that secures us a place in the knockout stages of the Europa League. Our European tour goes on to a new chapter. So four group stage matches is all we needed to qualify for the knockout stages of the Europa League. Andreas Pereira was man of the match with a 9.5 rating after securing the victory late on. 8.6 for the original goal scorer Diogo Jota and Kelvin Lawal off the bench got himself the same rating after getting the assist for our second goal. Sent goal and actually beat Torino. So if we hadn't won that game we actually wouldn't have qualified. Fair enough I did not expect that at all. So this is how Group B looks after that game and we are pretty much guaranteed to win the group now because Torino lost to St. Garland with six points clear with only six points available. Shouts to everyone getting a call up during the course of this month. We're in November and we've got Joseph Martinez obviously going with Venezuela, Harry Maguire and Jaden Sancho in the England squad, Deo Upamecano in a very competitive France squad while Jota and Sanchez are with Portugal, Jonathan David's over with Canada, Kevin Mbappé is in the Swiss side and Munir has even made it into the Spanish side. Fair play because he's in good form, he deserves that. But before any sort of international break kicks off we've got one more game in the league and it's personal. We're at home against West Bromwich Albion promoted from the championship this is a West Midlands clash and a big one and we are hoping to assert some dominance on this one obviously West Brom new to the Premier League we should be beating them especially given we're a European side now the two sides step out onto the pitch West Bromwich Albion are the lowest scoring team in the league so in theory we shouldn't have too much in terms of issues keeping them at bay our last Premier League game was I mean the less said the better so let's get back into the usual and grab a big victory here against our local rivals. Jaden Sancho central there for Hakim Ziyech. On beyond that is Adama Traore who can cut it back into the box there for Munir. It'll go all the way through to Jaden Sancho and he volleys it high and wide. He rushed the shot there, did Sancho. Back towards Martinez again first time. It'll come back towards him and it's blocked again by Bartley. Jesus Christ, these AI defenders are on something. How has he managed to get up from the original? Ah, so that's ridiculous. So Neves will swing this corner in. There's a lot more curve on it. Maguire heads it wide, just wide from Slabed. I can understand why the, the corner from the Europa League game went out of play, because I just watched that one. The curve on them is ridiculous now. Munir, down the line here is Johnny Otto, very advanced again. That's into Joseph Martinez, a tiny bit behind him. Now over towards Hakim Ziyech with the shot first time. It looks as if it might have been rising into that top corner, but it's wide in the end from the Moroccan. Oh, Johnny Otto there with an awful header well saved by Max Jackson. Was trying to lay that off to Maguire. It was a very simple header for Johnny Otto to execute there. Martinez in behind here is Munir. This is a great position for him. He'll cut inside. Still Munir and he's put it wide. That is our biggest chance of the game. That is easily our biggest chance of the game. I know he's tried to curl it around Bartley, but he hasn't got any curve on it. These last ditch blocks and challenges from West Brom are ridiculous, man. They're putting them in constantly. Second half has only just started. We might have a chance early. Early on here as the ball gets spread through towards Munir, blocked again! Oh my god, these blocks from the AI, what is going on? Here's Nyom, great block there from Neves, it'll trickle through to Ziek as well, good work from both of those guys tracking back there. Honestly, where is Johnny Otto? This man cannot position himself to save his life! 
ball in there to Chris Brunt is controlled poorly. The time where Neves was tracking back was to cover Johnny Otto, and then that time, literally two minutes later, he does the exact same thing. Into Ruben Neves. Goes with the ball roll. Still Ruben Neves blocked again by a West Brom defender. Still Munir puts it in. Blocked Neves into Hakim Ziyech and he's hit the post. Ah, oh, that was the biggest chance we've had. That was it. That was the one chance we've had where a West Brom defender couldn't get in the flipping way of it. Here's Gibbs. Ball to the back stick and Babu needs to deal with it. Oh my goodness me. No. Oh no, 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 no. How have we conceded that goal? Oh, I don't believe it with just six minutes of the game to go. James Morrison has scored, but that is bad from Max Jackson. And Babu is not obviously the greatest clearance. Oh, Max Jackson, come on. You've got hands. You can jump. You're taller than both of them. I put a lot of faith in this Youth Academy kid, and he's been very good, but that is a Oh no, that's so bad. That's so bad. And Babu could have done better, but it was, it, it, to be fair, the ball was going over his head. He did well to actually get his head on it in the first place. So I wouldn't have expected him to put an inch perfect clearance in at that point. But Johnny Otto there into Ruben Neves. Ball down the line here is for Diogo Jota. He should have the pace. He's challenged there by a West Brom defender. It's still Diogo Jota though. He puts it in its block by Neom, and that is the story of the game. I don't know, AI, AI blocks have been flipping mental in this episode but West Brom win the game. Oh, that's a really gutting victory. We've lost the worst flipping attack in the league. Are you mental? And Max Jackson lost us the game directly. The only goal of the game, and it was a thousand percent his fault. We've not had a local rival game in this series, and we've flipping lost the first one. I'm so vexed. A disappointing loss against local rivals, but at least we have a chance to put things right in the league. It is going to be a difficult game, though, away against Liverpool at Anfield. And as I mentioned, we suffered our heaviest defeat of the entire series in this game in season one. Patrizio is back in after that mistake for Max Jackson. That's not the end for Jackson, but out onto the pitch then we walk. Anfield is the setting. Liverpool Liverpool are the opponents. I don't know where they are in the table actually going into this game. Oh, very handy. There is the table. They're 10th actually, so underachieving massively. Really, we just need a better performance than what we got in uh, that game against our local rivals, really. And we might actually get it here with a great start as Ziyech is through on goal, but Mignolet, not even Mignolet, Bogdan. Uh, why is Bogdan playing? Camacho there with the ball into Allen. Solanka with a great ball there into Mane, and it's hit the post, thankfully for us. It was offside anyway. Over into Neves, still Ruben Neves trying to burst through and make things happen. Ball in is towards Martinez, and that is 1-0. 13 minutes gone, Joseph Martinez opens his account for this episode. Well set up by Neves as well, making the space, and a lovely little dance from Joseph. Martinez. I rate that a lot. I feel like that could be his actual real life celebration. Like it just matches him perfectly. I don't think it is, but it could be. Joseph Martinez grabs himself a goal. It's a simple one, really. Neves just runs to the byline, dinks it in. Neves nods it in. Gets there ahead of Trent Alexander-Arnold. I mean, I'm not surprised they're 10th in the league if they're playing teams like this on a regular basis. This starting 11 is not that great. Shakiri, Solanka now into Sadio Mane. Oh my god. The first time AI shooting back into play. What a goal that is from Sadio Mane. Really nice passing play. Could not get it off Liverpool to save my life there. That was a really good bit of build-up play, especially between Shakiri and Solanke. Solanka. I'd, I'd never known actually how to pronounce that name. Everyone says it differently. Anyway, regardless of that ridiculous goal from Mane, having said that, it's actually quite central. It's not the most in the corner shot I've ever seen. One thing, I, I, you know, I'll give Patrizio the benefit of the doubt in that he probably didn't expect Sadio Mane to shoot. He should have done, given the AI shoot first time every Every single time they're in possession of the ball. Trying to find Neves. He's done so this time. Neves with the ball through there towards Hakim Ziyech. Oh my god, what was that? Are you mental, mate? What is going on? Everything seems so inconsistent. Camacho out wide here into Mane. Well saved by Patrizio from the first time shot. Half time, at least we've got goals at the break, but it is level once again. 1-1 one, one is the scoreline this time. It's almost like with the most recent patch, they've changed everything for the player, but the CPU is exactly the same, if not enhanced. First time shots seem even more overpowered. AI defending seems even more overpowered. I don't know why they would do that to this game. It's already bad enough. Makano with a good challenge. Now into Ziek. That's out wide here for Munir. He's got Got space to run into is Munir. Straight up Bogdan, it falls to Ziyech, but what is that first touch, man? To the edge of the area here for Ruben Neves. Of course it's blocked by Fabinho. 
Why is every single shot blocked by the AI? Oh my god. Who makes the patches for this game? Why do you make it worse every single time without fail? Martinez. Neves trying to play it through for Munir, but Plattenhart gets it clear. I don't know how on earth he's found Solanka there. Through six bodies. Of course, my players can't block passes, but everything the AI will do will be a block. We're going to get swung in again by Neves. That's in towards Mbappé. Uber Meccano got there, it hits the crossbar, it'll fall to Jota, now into Mbabu, and it's wide there from him, the one time it doesn't get blocked, it's going wide obviously. Oh hello, we've got a really good opportunity here as the ball falls through towards Adama Traore, we can square this across, but it's somehow blocked by Marie <laughs> I've had enough, I've genuinely had enough, I've absolutely I've had enough. I've had enough. Every single thing is blocked by the AI. You can't do anything without it getting blocked. Dharma here into Neves. Central here is Munir. Ziek running through. Have to go back towards Munir again or over towards Jotu. Can play it into the centre for Munir. And there we have it. You're not flipping blocking that one. It's 2-1. Brilliant stuff. It was a really good move. Ziek with the through ball out wide into Jota who plays it back across into Munir. Now we've just got to hold on. Liverpool have brought on the brigade though in this game. They've, they bought Falcao, they bought Busquets, they brought them on. Salah's also on the pitch now as well. Liverpool just lump it long towards nobody in particular. Upa Meccano sweeps up. Wally then finds Upa Meccano again. And now this is Ruben Vinagre. Tamaseku through the centre there is Ruben Neves. This will go over the top towards Diogo Jota. It's volleyed against the crossbar. How have we hit the woodwork again? It doesn't matter. It's a 2-1 victory. That should have been a third goal. And it would have been a really nice one as well from Jota. But it is what it is. 2-1 is the final score. Munir wins it for us in the end. But... That was so hard fought. We deserved to win that game as well, but this AI blocking business has got to be nerfed, fam. It was bad enough as it was. It was already horrendous. Anyway, I won't complain anymore. The reality is we won the game 2-1. Ruben Neves was man of the match. 8.9 for Martinez, 8.4 for Munir, and an 8.7 for Jota. Also impressive. Now time for perhaps the most useless game you're ever going to see in this series. We're at home against St. Gall, and we're already through. It's the final game of the episode. They're technically the whipping boys of the group that they play better than Torino when we faced them last. 4-3-3 formation, because I don't want to be wasting two strikers in this game, so Jonathan David starts. Helder Costa on the left-hand side. Sanchez and Moutinho also play. If you're wondering why Johnny Otto is playing at left-back, I've literally given up with the kid, so I'm not going to be playing him in a Premier League games for a little bit. Ruben Vanagra is going to be taking that slot, hence why Johnny Otto is being used in this game instead of the first game of next episode. So we welcome St. Garland to the Molyneux Stadium. I've got to say, they play pretty well when we, when we faced them in the reverse fixture. That Moutinho's going to have to cover because Patrick Bennett's a little bit out of position. St. Garland coming forward. Lloyd Kelly does well. Though it looked as if it was going straight into the hands of Max Jackson. Thought maybe a bit of a counter-attack here with Morgan Moore. Oh, lovely flick there to find Renato Sanchez. Now in to Patrick Bennett, who skips past his man, plays it through to Jonathan David. Oh, what a goal that is. Hello. The Youth Academy boys have done a blinder. Jonathan David scores inside 10 minutes, but that was made by Morgan Moore and Patrick Bennett. The right back skipping past the challenge, almost brought down, stays on his feet, calmly plays it through to Jonathan David, who slots it in. Beautiful stuff, great counter attack there. Jonathan David set up by Morgan Moore and Patrick Bennett. The two of them, Morgan Moore and Patrick Bennett, traded the youngest player of the series accolade in the Hall of Fame in the same game, actually, because Morgan Moore came on as a substitute. Bennett had just broken it by playing the game in the first place. It might be an irrelevant game in terms of actual, you know, what it means for the series, but what it means to the young players that play in it, it could be a, it could be a deal breaker. Down the line. Lloyd Kelly's going to have to cover here. He's usually a left back. Ball is in and it's found the back of the net. It all comes from Vinagra being out of position. Left far too much space in the centre because Lloyd Kelly had to go across and cover. Didn't block the cross and then there wasn't anyone in the middle to, uh, to deal with the situation. If I'm going to be totally honest, Connor Cody should be in a better position there, really. It's not Jao Moutinho's job as the smallest player on the pitch to deal with that one. I mean, St. Garland, you know, they're not a bad team. They threatened to score in the reverse fixture, so to be honest, I'm almost not surprised they've scored in this game, especially with a weaker side that we've got in this one. That's the end of the first half. We'll make it four from four where we're going at the break level. Hopefully, like two of the previous games, we can win it in the second half, though. Johnny Otto trying to play that down the line for Helder Costa. I've got, to be fair, that's, a, that's 
something. I've not seen Helder Costa at all in this game. Kelly's had a very solid game at centre-back, as he always seems to, to be fair. Jonathan David cuts that one back here for Helder Costa with the finesse in off the post, and it proves overpowered again. We had Diogo Jota score from the left wing against Celtic. Helder Costa scores a similar goal. Jonathan David picks him out. Costa with a nice burst of pace, gets past the fullback. The keeper probably should be doing better from that position. It's not even got much power on it. It's a bit of a floater. It's not that high. It's a good uh, it's a good height for him and everything. It's probably poor goalkeeping, really, but it's in off the woodwork and it's 2-1 now. I literally said earlier, Helder Costa has done next to nothing all game, but I suppose in a squad like this, you don't necessarily have to. you just got to provide the quality that, you, that everyone knows you have every now and again. Coutinho there through towards Sanchez. In behind here is Jonathan and David. No, it's not. It's actually Morgan Moore. He's getting caught, though, and it was a great challenge, in fairness. It's bouncing around. Still not dealt with, though, by St. Gaul, and this is Helder Costa. Stood to the back stick for Morgan Moore. He's not tall enough, though, to get on the end of it. Yeah, unfortunately with Morgan Moore and Patrick Bennett, they're A, not their paciest customers. They've got the ability, but they're not that pacey, and also they're both very tired at the moment. Their stamina is not that great for either of them, so Lloyd Kelly there with a good block ball into Barnetta, and we've conceded in the air again, and once again, it it's because we've got a midfielder trying to deal with the player in the middle. Barnetta points to someone in the crowd. I don't know who he's aiming for. The first cross is blocked really well by Lloyd Kelly. But where? Ah, it's just... It's because we've got Jao Moutinho having to mark... Both of the goals have come because Jao Moutinho is having to, to mark the player. And it's not his job. He yes, he could do better. A, he's small. B, it's not his job to be marking someone right in the middle of the penalty area. That's the centre-backs that should be doing that. We're going to have to make subs here, and it's not because they've been poor, but the stamina is so low on these youth academy players, so more is going to come off, and we're going to see Morgan Gibbs-White replace him. And we're also going to see uh, Jao Moutinho come off, and we're going to take a risk, Bonnet. Jordan Jackson, we've not seen him at all in this series. He's a youth academy player who's making his debut right now. You're also going to see a debut for Portuguese left-back Hugo Anibal, who's going to have to play at right back, I believe, unless Johnny Otto's got better weak foot. This is Anibal, now into Gibbs White. Sanchez over here towards Helder Costa in acres of space. Can't give him that sort of space. 3-2, Helder Costa scores again. It's a brace for him. We've led three times in this game. What a game this has been, I've got to say. It's been a really enjoyable one after the, the, hor the horrendous nature of the last one. Again, it's poor goalkeeping, though. He's just parried it into his own. It's actually straight at him. That is actually an awful finish. Hugo Anibal. Lovely ball into Jonathan Davis. But he's been good on the ball, actually, as, as Anibal, to be fair. He's a left-back, playing at right-back, and he's 54 rated. But everything he's done so far has been pretty decent. Here, though, come St. Garland with Tafer. Again, it was due to Johnny Otto being out of position. How on earth have we not conceded there? What a save! from Max Jackson, and then it goes against the post. Sanchez again, tries the skill to get away from the St. Garland player. He'll lay this off here to Morgan Gibbs-White, who's got some space, and that's an unbelievable goal from Morgan Gibbs-White to round things off. 4-2, he's one of our own, and he's rifled in a brilliant goal from range there. It looked like the keeper got a hand to it, but obviously St. Garland have got loads of players forward there. They've got the space there, and again, it's poor keeping three of the goals. I don't know what rating this St. Garland goalkeeper is, but he could have done better with three of them. He's got a strong, I mean, he's got fingertips to it, but he probably should have got more to it, really. I'm not going to take anything away from the strike, though. Morgan Gibbs-White is an absolute baller. That is the final action of the game. It's a 4-2 victory and a really, really good game, actually. I win against Torino next episode and we'll have genuinely claimed all of the points available in the groups. And if that is not a statement of intent for the entire tournament, I don't know what is. Jonathan David was man of the match, I find interesting. He got a goal, no assists. Uh, no, he got a goal and an assist. Fair enough. Helder Costa got two goals, so I know this was a bit of a meme last year. We seem to be fifth all the time. It's happening again. We're fifth once again, this time on goal difference. So at least we're making the stride back up to the top four again. Fulham still in the Champions League places. It's Spurs top though ahead of United and Chelsea. Our win against Liverpool has helped us a lot. Stoke as well, fair play to them. In the background though, now you'll be seeing the Hall of Fame where all the records and accolades are kept for the course of this series. I don't think too much has changed today. Overall rating is the same, growth is kind of the same, uh, goals and goals contribution is the same. And in the top right of the screen now, you'll be able to see the vote for player of the episode. And it'll actually be there this time. My sincerest apologies for missing it out. 
out in the last episode for, well, for the first day anyway. That though is it for today's episode of FIFA 19 Wolves Career Mode, and I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, slap a like on it, and of course subscribe if you are new to the channel. It's the big red button under the video, and it massively helps me out. You can also follow me on social media these days too. My Twitter and Insta are at the official FNG, and links are down below. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. I've been smoking and drinking, yeah. said the weed and the voice got me thinking skeptical. Boy, you better know when I'm under the influence, if I say shit, then I meant it all. Had a flashback when I used to kick ball, and the coach told me I went technical. Man, I lost all the air in my lungs, and it's like man took a low blow to the testicles. Like, see the spare time, I invested all to the music. Dug deep, now I'm seeing improvements. Spill thoughts on the ink on the page, and it feels therapeutic. Yeah.